everybody, it's Jeremy. Welcome back to Pathfinder Wrath of the Righteous. This is our Beast Tamer Bard build. Episode 31. And I think, I think, don't quote me on this, but I think we are actually close to um, being done with Anabras, or Act 1, or, or we're getting very close to being able to assault the Grey Garrison. I don't know if Act 1 ends after that, but I assume that it does. So, anyways. Um, so, I want to, before we go do anything, really, um, my plan is to do a little bit of looking through our quests. Uh, the storyteller is certain that the notes he seeks are hidden in the Grey Garrison. Okay, so we got that. Storyteller is ready to revive the ancient artifact. To do this, he will need five vials of magic essence. Okay. Uh, we're done with Days of Strife. Done with No Better Time for Banquet. We've got the League of the Inspiring Cart. Elon and his friends rushed from their camp to aid Canopus during the demon attack. When the city is no longer in danger, there will be time to visit the camp. The ring must be there. Okay, so after Canopus. Um, More than nothing, we want to visit the Nameless Ruins. Again, after Canopus. Assuming somewhere in Act 2. We've got Stolen Moon. We want to talk to Wolgiv. Wants to discuss something with the commander in private. So, we go talk to him in the inn, I'm assuming. Uh, friend in need, we already did that. We've got Dragon's Fate. Terindelev's scale sheds some light on the fate of the protector of Canabras, but much remains unknown. To learn the full story, find something else that once belonged to Terindelev. Is this... Did they tell us... Uh, it doesn't say that... This doesn't say that it'll be um, failed if we don't do it here. So I'm assuming that means we will find Terendelev items later on in the game. Um, Feud of the Faithful. Try to convince Hull Run to leave Ramian in peace, which we did. Uh, the Outcast. According to the Dark Hunter Thorn's warning, Elessa will strike soon. Commander should prepare to face her head on. Wait for Kalesa's schemes to be revealed. Hmm. I. Yeah, I still know what to think about that, but again, not gonna fail. Uh, Chili Creek. Yeah, no big deal. Common cause. Okay. Gather allies. Potential allies can be found in the most like unlikely of places. I think we got all of these. We've got some Thieflings, some Clerics of Desna, and the Knights of the Flaming Glance. So I think we're good here. Maybe. It still shows the Knights of the Flaming Lance as undone. Discuss the Grey Garrison attack plan with Irabeth. Okay, so let's head to the Defender's Art, I think is going to be the plan. And we'll see if we can get some of this big hole. Calypso is not moving properly there. That was uh, very strange. All right, we got the market square. We have done all of these locations. So yeah, let's just head back to the defender's heart, travel. Ooh, 
Oh, it's a cheer. Oh, quiet now. But how will they know I've arrived? Doubt is the heart's greatest. And together, challenge. we stand. Oh, me? Meditate on your mistakes. It might make you feel better. Okay. You've crossed the wrong Let's have mountain. Some fun. Nice. Uh, go ahead and charge. Mm, wow. There are multiple shears here. We'll go ahead and fight defensively and move up. Protect land from this direction. All right, what are we thinking? Oh, right, he's uh, <laughs> he is always what's it called? Staggered on the first turn. Just kind of a pain in the ass, but I don't know. It's fun. Let's bring in a leopard. Very good. Be fine there. Let's step forward you and attack here. Me. Nice. Cover me, all right? Huh? Oh, big whiff. Rolled a four. Oof. Oh, and we were fighting defensively. That was that was my bad, anyways. The light. Definitely not Take what we you. wanted. That's okay, though. I'll cut you wide open. Excuse me? That guy took three attacks of opportunity. Which we mostly missed. Uh, to attack my leopard? How strange. Out of my sight. I mean, whatever. Get him, leopard. I mean, well, uh, well enough, well enough. Uh, let's just shake in him. Not stirred. And land can just put him down. Very nice. All right, easy peasy. I remember the first one of those, seeing the first one of those, and it's scaring the piss out of me. All right, cool. Done and done. All right, I think goals while we're here are one, uh, talk to Wolgif, obviously, right? Two, try to see if we can't figure out the flaming lance scenario, because um, I don't, I don't know what's up with that. Uh, and three. Uh, talk to... What's his butt? But. Daron. Beautiful. See what we can do. Mm. 
Here are the Desnans. We already saw the Tieflings. Here we go. Right. And I thought these were the the flaming lance or whatever. Yeah. Knights of the Flaming Lance have joined the Crusaders. So what's the... Hmm. I wonder... Do we just have until we trigger the next step of that? Or this to... Because I don't want to fail this, so... We'll have to we'll have to double. So let's go do a uh, stolen moon real quick. I'm gonna laugh when Wolgif had the thing the entire time. I cause I'm betting he actually does. Psst, look, Chief, I got something to show you. Ta da! A <laughs> real beaut, isn't it? My god, of course he did. He makes a subtle gesture, and an amulet on a chain appears in his hand. A silver amulet in the shape of a waning moon, with a dark crystal in the middle. The moon of the abyss. Did you really have the amulet this whole time? Since that night, Chief, Melround didn't even set eyes on it. While he was dealing with the golem, I sneaked past them, and that was that. So you did betray the Thieflings. Oof. That cuts me deep, Chief. You and I saw who the traitor was. It's just that when we robbed the shop, I went in first and took what I wanted. Nothing wrong with that. Wow. He found out? Or I, here's the thing. Did he find out or did he, did he just luck out? Although, of course, I did think about hiding the moon and just taking myself off somewhere warm when all this blows over. But only because I want to see the world. Is it a crime to want to travel? Huh? I, I love counts for treachery these days. Remind me, why is inside him so important? Do you really not remember it? Oh, I thought you would appreciate it. I mean, I it's remember it. I'm, I'm, why is it's it so important? The ancient trees and wonders shop. It's the pride of his collection. The moon of the abyss. An amulet with a rare crystal crafted by an unknown maker. So it's just when pretty? When I think of how much this thing is worth, it makes my head spin. Why is it worth so much? You've been searched by guards. How did you manage to hide the amulet? <laughs> Thieves have their ways. Up his butt. Why didn't you give the amulet to Charisme right away? What? So she would slay me right away, you mean? You saw how antsy she was over Canabras and all this. So I did it. I took the moon of the abyss. But I didn't go to Erebeth. And Big Sister wouldn't hear my explanations. She doesn't have the time. I even thought I'd hide the moon somewhere. And then when all the noise had died down, I'd go get it and make a run for it. I'm sick of the thieflings. And they never appreciated me anyway. Of course. Why did you steal the Moon of the Abyss? You wouldn't, you wouldn't have been able to sell an item so rare anyway. <laughs> Why, he asks? It's expensive. Pretty. And you know, it's my amulet, actually. Not meaning I stole it, but... I, I mean, this is my inheritance. My grandma and I were poor. All we had was a jewelry box with the moon in it. She used to store it under the floor in the basement. And she'd take it out sometimes uh, just to look at it. Interesting. Interesting. She was always nicer when she had a few drinks in her, so I could ask her things then. One time I asked where she got it from, and she said it was from a demon. You know, the demon who was my grandfather. He said the moon was to be passed down. My ma was good for nothing and nobody, so that's why grandma decided to keep the amulet for me. She used to say it would be mine when I grew up. But she couldn't wait until I grew up. She squandered my inheritance when she became a drunk. Took it to Fileman's shop and pawned it. He gave her some coppers for it, and she didn't even haggle. Just grabbed them and ran back to the tavern before last orders. Oof. 
I've been going to Fileman's to look at the moon ever since I was a kid. He chased me away, but I just kept going back, so eventually he gave up. He didn't skimp on security. The place was like a fortress, so he wasn't worried about a street rat like me pinching anything. Even when I got more skilled, I couldn't get any closer to it. One day, I had no one to go with. Another day, there were only oafs who'd never stolen anything more than a church donation box. But when Charisme had planned everything out, I, I realized I had a chance to get the moon and move away from here. Maybe to Garand, I, I hear it's warmer there. Nice. I've stayed with the family for too long. Hmm. Atone for your crimes. <laughs> uh. See, I I would go the good route, but. I honestly feel like that's bullshit. I I don't feel like the tieflings necessarily feel like the tiefling the tieflings are friends, right? Like they're backstabbers and betrayers, the lot of them. They would have thrown him under the bus just as easily. They tried to, you know? Um e even though he obviously did do the thing. But uh, so I don't really feel good about the good option. And then uh, I don't want to hit the lawful or evil one because we're not playing lawful or evil. So um, I'm torn between risking everything. This kind of, you know, chastises him. But I, this is, I would do it's your business, not mine. But I don't want to seem dismissive, right? This isn't just some shiny trinket. First, maybe some rich person's just dying to buy it. We need to put out some feelers and see if anyone's in the market. Second, maybe it'll come in handy. Yeah, that's what and I'm besides, thinking. Besides, I, I, I spent so many years looking at it. <laughs> Your grandpa I was a demon. It's like we're fighting what demons. If my grandfather left something else, and my grandma spent that too. Maybe I could have had my own barony already if things had turned out differently, what? or got some decent education in the capital. Decent education, dreams, maybe, but, but a barony? Right I mean, here. if, if the demon left your grandmother your that much wealth, then she would be a baroness already. Like, all right, we'll, we'll hit with the shrug. It's your business, not mine. Allies, friends, it's all a load of crap. Life brings us together, forces us to make plans, do whatever it is we do, but it's a safe bet that this ain't forever. I might be a traitor, but the others, are they any better than me? Melround had a good reputation in the family. He was trusted, and you see what happened. If you abide by the law, anyone can rob you. So you need to break the law first when no one expects it, and run before you go soft and get too attached. My goodness. He is a, he is a thief to the core. Like, he isn't just a... He isn't just a, oh, I steal because it makes me rich or anything like that. He, like, legitimately believes the lifestyle is what you have to do to survive as him, right? Which, honestly, what from what I've seen in the game, I don't necessarily think that he's wrong. Whatever you think, I owe you. I'm not just a thief. I have my own business selling things. Thanks to you, I'm still in the family. And they, well, I, I mean, we have the black market sewn up in this city. It's a good way to sell valuables. Oh, can we actually sell valuables with him? So, if you need anything, a Ooh. scroll or something, just say the word. I have a little portal to our people in Erosian. You put a note there, and you get what you need. I can't get you anything big, but what they do have is all high quality. Nothing's too good for you, Chief. What's mine is yours. For a price, of course. Why, is this legitimately a thing? Alright, let's check. Show me what you can get using your Thiefling connections. Look, Chief, the Thieflings have all the best things. Ooh... Okay, he's actually got a chunk of sh of shit. Okay, okay. We've got Monster Hunter. 
A plus one Dwarven Urgrosh grants its wielder a plus one on attack rolls against magical beasts. Okay. Estoc of Purity. Uh, cold Iron, Enhancement plus one, Finesse, 1d3 positive energy damage. It's cool. It annoys me that Estocs and Rapiers are a different thing. A gnome hooked hammer? That's so specific. This plus one gnomed hooked hammer deals an additional plus one damage to chaotic creatures. Cool. Quarter staff of slip gives a plus one competence bonus to AC. Wand of Grease. That's that could actually be pretty neat. Wand of Sleep could actually be pretty neat. The only problem is is the DC on these wands are pretty low. You know? Low enough to the point to where I don't think they're going to be... Like, Grease, maybe. Sleep and <gasps> Ray of Sickening, I don't think they'll be useful. You know? Like, that DC class is so low that the things that we would want to use these this on, they just, you know, kill them anyways. Scroll of Doom, Scroll of Corrosive Touch. A Cold Iron Star Knife. That's interesting. Holy water. Holy water is also interesting. Two D four direct damage and one point of holy damage. All of the individuals within five feet. All of well, no, all the not all the individuals. Bulk cell. Pretty easily. I feel pretty confident about that. Hmm. This lockpicker's kit grants its owner a plus one bonus on all trickery skill checks. I think we we're done with that. Uh, let's check and see what this is. Are you really staying in the party or just waiting for a chance to run off? As if I could, there are demons and dangers around every corner. The tiefling stopped short. Don't you worry, chief. I'll work off my debt honestly. I won't stab you in the back or go on the run with your money. And if you buy my wares, I won't have to leave at all. Fair enough. Sounds good. Alright, so that completed Stolen Moon. I am concerned about this common cause thing. Check this room.
Mm. Okay. So it looks like it looks like it's probably just that this quest is open until I go past the point of no return with it, pretty much. Right? So hopefully that means we're good to go, and once we start the Grey Garrison stuff, we'll just move on from there. Let's talk to Daemon. The Defender's Heart is a splendid choice for the Crusade's outpost. The very sight of these walls brings back fond memories of drinks and revels. The drinks were really good, by the way. I ask you a few personal questions. You can try. I've heard stories about the tragedy that befell your family. I hope you don't feel obliged to offer me your insincere condolences on this unfortunate occasion. My whole family, my entire noble line, they all died, and demons are to blame. It's not like I actually loved any of my relatives, except for my mother, but what's gone is gone. The family crypts are full of corpses, all covered in dust in the shadows of the past. What do you cherish most in life? That's a personal question. There are far too many things that I cherish to fit them all into a single conversation. Believe it or not, but I might be one of the most life-loving people you've ever known. Gavron smiles. His eyes are gleaming with something different from his usual impudence and irony. There's a dreamy air about him all of a sudden. I rarely meet anyone who embraces the joys of living as enthusiastically as myself. So many exciting and beautiful things in the world. It should be illegal to waste your time on anything you do not enjoy. And I am not afraid to repeat that to anyone's face, should it be Descari and his demonic herd, or Iomade the Lightbringer herself. What do you hate the most? The feeling of helplessness, the lack of control over my own life, Aaron replies without thinking. And then he adds, with obvious sarcasm, and onion rings, of course. I'd murder the person who came up with those abominations. Hold the phone. <laughs> onion rings are delicious. Aaron and I now have a problem with each other. You don't seem especially keen on helping people, but your knowledge of healing is truly impressive. What prompted your interest in that? Ah. If you really want to try out everything in li everything life has to offer, you also have to understand how to deal with the consequences. I'm not talking about a simple hangover, mind you. Do you have any good stories about your past exploits? I've got plenty, but I have to warn you that even the most outrageous debauchery sounds far less thrilling when you were not the one doing the debauching. Uh, still, since you asked, I suppose the worst mess I've ever got myself into was when I staged my own kidnapping. I was once in correspondence with one of the Riverland nobles, the young Lord Lebeda, and he told me about his days as a hostage to a group of bandits. This made me wonder what it would be like, and I thought it might be fun to set up a little experiment. Wow. I engineered my own kidnapping by a certain gang through a chain of intermediaries and hired actors. Those fellows took the job very seriously. They caught me by surprise, killed two, my two bodyguards, wow, holy fuck, and even tied me up. Of course, the whole thing seems preposterous now, but it seemed like an ingenious idea at the time. The employers had told the kidnappers that they were to keep me safe and sound, and another group of mercenaries in disguise was watching the spectacle from afar, ready to interfere in case anything went wrong. I think it went wrong. Two of your bodyguards were murdered. It turned out to be a terrible idea, nonetheless. It wasn't the least bit fun or exciting. Sure, those bandits had been unable to torture or hurt me physically in any way, but they had plenty of other non-invasive methods of humiliation in their arsenal. Taking almost all of your clothes off and splashing ice-cold water all over you, for example. Ugh. I can't even remember if I said anything truly offensive to provoke them. Even though I initially planned to let them go after the ransom, they, their overly emotional reactions made me change my mind. I told my mercenaries to hang them all on the spot. I suppose the whole ordeal taught me a valuable lesson, which is that I'm not built for hardships and trials. Yeah, I gotta hit him with it. Wait, you just told me that a couple of your bodyguards died during the staged kidnapping. Does that mean two innocent people lost their lives so that you could have a bit of fun? Hmm. That's, and he hits you with a, uh... He hits us with a reasonable response. 
Daerin pales a little, but not out of shame. Oh, spare me. It irks me beyond all measure when I hear about the suffering of innocence. He sighs, looks away, and continues in a flat, polite tone. Yes, the bodyguards died. Guarding nobles is a dangerous job. They were well aware of the risk. I don't really see a problem with that. Besides, they proved their incompetence. They would have stood no chance against real kidnappers. Dude's got a point! <sighs> I'll hit him with the chaos. I'd say life's too short not to try out everything you can. I shall console myself with that thought. So, that was a stupid story, and now I'll tell you a truly brilliant one. Prelate Ulrun had always strictly prohibited any public celebrations in Canabras. He always picked on me for my lack of respect for the fallen and whatnot. His grumbling annoyed me so much that one day I drove four barges into the city harbor and set up a celebration on their decks. The ships on the river didn't fall under the prelate's jurisdiction, you see, so all he could do was snarl at me from the embankment. I, for one, did not forget the old boy. The main attraction of the festivities involved an inquisitor of Iomade dancing and roasting beautiful witches on illusory bonfires, taking off his clothes with every new victim. The spectacle was so heated, in every sense of the word, that the prelate almost had a stroke. If only he had. Daerin gives you a mischievous smile. I still consider that to be one of my finest ideas of all time. Should the Crusaders ever succeed in their efforts against the World Wound, I will do my utmost to get permission to hold a grand public celebration. Rivers of wine, free of charge, an, obl an obligatory parade, and a carnival in the evening. A contest for the most provocative succubus contest with a hefty prize in gold. Another contest where the participants have to fish a sausage out of a wine jar blindfolded with their hands tied behind their backs. The wine will symbolize the blood of all the dead heroes of the war. And the sausage. Well, they'll find a heroic meaning for that as well, I'm sure. Over the years, the commemoration of the greatest victory of light over darkness will turn into an ordinary holiday. A fine excuse to get sloshed and rut like animals in the streets. Good. Good, Darren. I'm glad your priorities are, are keyed in. <laughs> Do you enjoy being mean to everyone? Yes. And here I thought you were hurling insults at people purely by accident. Aaron laughs. This time his smile is surprisingly soft. I like your way with words. What did you expect me to say if I wanted to make a good impression? Something along the lines of, I'm not mean. I'm just being honest with myself and everyone else. What people use excuse when they want to keep up their saccharine facade while still saying whatever nasty little things spring to mind. That is not what I do. I have no hidden agenda. I'm just as much an insufferable prick as I seem to be. Some people are simply begging for a good dose of mockery, so who am I to deny them? I don't give a damn if anyone holds a grudge against me. Which is why I don't even try to avoid it. Question. Uh, hope this conversation was at least the slightest bit amusing. It was. I like to talk about life in Mindev in the Crusade. I ask I'm all ears, which are pinned on Mindev today in general. It doesn't exist, Aaron scowls. It is a frontier country that has attracted every utopian adventurer and fanatic from all over the world for more than just a for more than a century. It is a place where the strangers outnumber the locals, especially in the cemeteries. The population of Mindev, for the most part, consists of humans and other races not exactly known for their longevity. So the current generation of Mindevians were born in the shadow of the world wound and raised by the Crusades. I might be the last person to complain about the decline of traditions and lack of character in our country, but I also happen to come from one of Mendev's most ancient lineages. Its history is bred deep in my bones. My tutors told me stories about my heritage. The galleries, libraries, and even the interiors of the manors I grew up in were filled to the brim with memories of events long past. There were many heroes of old Mendev among my glorious ancestors, or at the very least patrons and contemporaries of such heroes. Does anyone actually remember them now? I don't think so. These days, Mindev has its own heroes, in shining armor with holy fire in their eyes. I myself remember how several streets that once celebrated my ancestors were renamed in honor of some crusaders who had died in a heroic fashion. None of the citizens remember the old crossing festival that was eventually replaced with Armas. 
Armas? Armasse? I don't know. These holidays even share the same date. Pretty much the only authentic thing about Mindev now is its endless war with the demons. And is there a point in bemoaning this state of affairs? What's gone is gone. But at least we are no longer some tiny, godforsaken northern kingdom, and that's something, isn't it? You don't really like crusaders, do you? Quite the opposite. When I think about how many devoted heroes are willing to protect this world against the demonic threat, I feel so inspired. Inspired to continue indulging my vices while they fight to keep me safe. Imagine being someone like me. Someone who has everything they can possibly desire. Youth, beauty, wealth, an honest wish to live and enjoy living but vanishingly few ways to put it all to any use. The fact that the word fun itself is not yet outlawed in Mindev must be due to some bureaucratic oversight. Wow. You can celebrate your victory solemnly. You can wet your whistle after a challenging battle. But what about real fun, joys, pleasures? I can't remember a single evening at court without someone chasti chastening, chastening me or my banquets, my lovers and mistresses, my luxuriant clothes, my everything. It would have been a lot easier to tolerate all those hypocrites if they took a break once in a while. Instead, there was a constant fuss about how I wasn't doing anything for the greater good, and how I only brought shame to my royal cousin. You think of our enemies. You mean the demons themselves or their followers? The former deserve to be cleansed with heavenly fire for their unholy origin alone. The latter, or their idiocy. I don't understand why a sane person would submit themselves to Descari or Cabriri. Alright, Lady Noctula almost seems like a bearable enough mistress. There are so many other cultists. They've tried to recruit me twice already, and I'm not even that old. First, a very pretty tiefling girl tried to seduce me. Then they came with promises of Lord Baphomet's endless boons. I still wonder exactly what the old hornhead could offer me that I don't already have. You know what I've been thinking? Every shopkeeper knows this trick, an enticing offer along the lines of one in every hundred buns from my bakery contains a silver coin. And of course, a hired actress to make a memorable show of finding said coin in her sweet roll. And there you have it. Hundreds of gullible fools storm the shop hoping to win a prize for themselves. I think the infamous Arilu Vorlesh was such an actress for the Lords of the Abyss, a petty Sarkorian witch who became the uncrowned queen of the world wound, waited upon hand and foot by demon lords. Only instead of visiting a bakery, the gullible fools rushed to join the cultists. We have an army of unbelievably powerful supernatural invaders from another dimension hell-bent on destruction and domination. And what did the fools do? They serve them willingly as pawns and lackeys, hoping against hope that someday their masters will notice them. I won't believe how delighted I am to be so vain and self-absorbed. These sins protect me against demonic temptation better than any virtue. That's a really fucking good point. It's hard for me not to like Daren. What made you join my party, after all? You mean instead of carousing far away from Canabras with a small army of mercenaries to protect me? I'll get to that. You see, when you appeared at my door out of nowhere, awash with bravery and heroism, and started tossing demons around like ragdolls, I thought that your company might be more exciting than my usual crowd of sycophantic hangarons. You seemed... competent and mysterious at the same time. So I decided that a little demon hunting wouldn't hurt especially with such an intriguing entourage. That party had been growing staler with every passing second anyway. Needless to say, I'm not here for long. I shall return to the capital, or even one of my country estates, as soon as we reclaim the city. Crusades, bellowing commanders, a row upon row of identical tents. This is not the life for me, but I will certainly remember you and our adventures together. For a week, or perhaps even longer than that. Alrighty then. Wow. Okay, let's talk to Storyteller real quick. See, nope. This guy who had stuff. Rolls. Roll of haste. 
handle it. I want to check our spell books real quick. Not my spell book. Other people's spell books. Uh, haste, haste, displacement. Uh, invisibility, blur, mirror image, create pit. Probably don't need invisibility. The only person we're going to use invisibility on already has it, so we'll take more create pit. Um... I'm a big fan of color spray. The five rounds. That's so short, though. Only problem with it. All of the hastes. All of the scorching rays. Um, Jaren. Good there. There. We're going to take an additional mage armor. Ability, resist energy, I feel like is good. Mirror image, I feel like is pretty good. Amelia! <laughs> I actually bet Stinking Cloud could be pretty nice. Um, All lightning. That could be cool. Spell descriptors evil. Not like a oh, it's a resist energy communal. I definitely want to keep that up. <laughs> that's that's my anti fireball option. Okay. I think we're uh relatively good. So I want to save and we're gonna rest. Uh-huh. We'll go for spicy pastry and she making. A scroll of shield is a hundred percent chance for success so there's no reason to worry about adding anything to it um and we're really just doing this to make sure we reset our spell slots and everything like that before we oh look at that foot look at him kitties kitties we got a we have a yin yang of kitte going on over here. Wait, are we not done? Yep. Go game, go. Continue. Can't make the demons wait. All right, save, close. I'm specifically wanting to make sure that
common cause completes properly. Uh, and we talk to Irbeth. I thank you for saving the esteemed citizens of Canabras, even though not all of them deserve to be saved. Aomadai, forgive my words. Irabeth casts a meaningful look at Count Arende, sitting at a nearby table. I don't really mean that, of course. I just never fail to be astounded by the way that good people seem to perish, while the not-so-good prove to be incredibly, amazingly enduring. Even so, the Count did offer me his aid. Can't be all that. Can't be all that bad. Yes, that's not like him at all. Joining the Crusades is a tradition among Mendevian nobles, but Garen Erende was never too keen on fighting demons. The Count has a certain reputation in Mendev. He is not a pleasant individual by any means, but he's not known for any particular villainy either. The Count enjoys a life of leisure surrounded by a gaggle of sycophants who are always eager to badmouth the Queen at his command. He likes settling scores, too. There was a hero of the First Crusade, Sir Lant, a kind and honest man. After the end of his glorious career as a soldier, he became a wise mentor to the younger generation. He ran afoul of the Count somehow, perhaps by lecturing him about his idle lifestyle and a lack of purpose. When Sir Lant died, the Count managed to buy a portion of his estate and ordered the knight's helmet to be reforged into a chamber pot. Wow. And, of course, he didn't keep his little joke private. The Queen was particularly affronted by it because Sir Lant used to be her most loyal man-at-arms. I was there receiving an assignment from Her Majesty and witnessed the exact moment she found out about the helmet's fate. It's a small thing, but I could see the Queen's anguish at the travesty that had been made of her friend's legacy. Yeah, I mean, oof. That's what our Count is like as a person. As for his talent for survival... You know the story of Heaven's Edge. He was the only member of his family to escape with his life when the demons unleashed a magical plague at the Arende estate. Tell me more about the events at Heaven's Edge. I don't know all the de details. It happened a while, ba a while ago, back when I was a mercenary and had nothing to do with Canabras. I only know that there was a grand feast in honor of Daeron's birthday. All his relatives were invited along with a few other distinguished guests. Everyone died from a mysterious disease someone had unleashed on the estate, including the servants, the guards, and a number of clerics and paladins. But the young Count survived, because of his healing ability, I suppose. Aaron does possess an unusually brilliant talent, even if the application of his skills leaves much to be desired. Irabeth scowls. That sounds sus. That sounds super sus. There's a bunch of clerics and paladins there, but the only individual that survives is a young, young boy. Sounds like he offed his whole family, is what it sounds like. Why was he trying to provoke the queen? Who knows? Could be some family matter. The Count is Her Majesty's cousin twice removed, or something like that. But I think he simply enjoys infuriating people. Crusaders and Iomade's servants especially telling me all this. Okie dokie. We're gonna save and lose a kitty and everything is ready for an attack on the Grey Garrison. Time to attack. As the story unfolds, you draw closer to events that have the power to change everything. Some quests and locations have become unavailable. Proceed when you are ready. arms all right oh this hurts this actually really hurts i really like having dayren right now because he's got so much healing but i really kind of want to try out ember some more she also has a fair amount of healing but she also has things like scorching ray um you know and she's got sleep, which just it, it just seems so fucking good. So, and I like Ember. I think she's really cool. So, I think we're gonna try Ember a little bit. The Burning City.
I like how we're on a little little crusader horsey now. I like it. Very cool. Common cause. Okay, cool. Wait. Doesn't that mean we failed? Kill Ramian. Okay. Clem doesn't initiate tieflings, etc. Oh, okay, so here's the ritual. It has to. There's no room for error. Oh, right. We're supposed to get like perma hasted for this. It worked! Praise Iomade! Now the demons now it's the demons' turn to suffer. Okay. Oh, uh, it's it's not a forever haste. Oh, it's an hour and a half. So it's not a forever haste, but it's a pretty long haste. Uh make sure we're all good. Yeah, I think we are. Um I say that, but we should restless. do things like this real quick. I heed the voice of the spirits. Rely on me. I'll watch your back. One hour per level? I want to check this real quick. Got protection. He has natural armor. So I think I want to put the natural protection on Camellia. Camellia still has a minus level. Still has a negative level. Permanent. Spells like restoration. Fortunate. Open your heart to me. Oh, you can put it on armor or you can put it on sheep. Okay, stop. You want to put bark skin on Melia. 27 AC right now. Something wrong. And we're doing um, mage armor on Wolgif. He has 16. <sighs> Don't mind me. Goes up to 20. Goes up to 29. Well, no reason and then Sila has 29. And I want to try putting on the. What's on your mind? I wonder. Let's try putting on the magical vestment. So, the twenty-nine. Her four caster levels. So, a bright future awaits. she has right now 
plus one half plight, and she has a plus two shield. So if we put this on her, my issue is it might not work because Sila's got this negative level. Uh, but in theory, um, if we put it on Sila, we can turn this half plate into a half plate. Half plate plus. I heed the voice of the spirits. I will help where I can. Okay, yeah, that actually worked. Soot is restless. I wonder why. Yes. Trust in yourself. Can I put twenty-three? I put this on land. Yes. I'm all ears. Yeah. Boost him up to twenty-five. Okay. Nicely. Cool. Together we stand. Quick save. Beautiful. What's our map look like? Where are we going? Let's see what we can do. Now, what is that? You can trust me. I hope you appreciate this. Watch and learn. Some potatoes, some fruits, and what do we have here? Lots of trap. That's such a long way away. Holy oh, crap. I am helpful, am I not? I mean, yeah, I fucking guess. Jesus. Found a trap for three rooms over. Calypso's just like straight lining around. The stirf. Hello, scabbard of heirloom sword. An unassuming but well-made scabbard. The name Tirabade is imprinted on the leather in silver lettering. Ask Irabeth about how about ask Irabeth how the scabbard for her family's heirloom sword ended up in a smuggler's catch. Here we go. All right. Save the last one for me. The assault on Grey Garrison truly begins. Oh, this is going to be exciting. We will pick this up on the next video. If you're watching on Twitch, stick around. We're going to keep playing. If you're watching on YouTube, I hope you enjoyed. And we will see you next time for more Pathfinder Wrath of the Righteous. Bye-bye, everybody. Hey everybody, thanks for watching. 
If you enjoyed the video, consider leaving a like, commenting, or subscribing. It really helps me out. If you'd like to see me live, head over to my Twitch at twitch.tv forward slash the distant horizon.